Hi everyone, my name is Kayvan and I decided to create this fairly quick tutorial to explain and solve the most common error messages you might get when you deploy your .NET Core application to your production server. There are times when your app is running fine on the development environment, but when you upload it to a web server you face different error messages. And for that reason, you should enable the details of the error messages. So a little bit about me. I've got over 15 years of experience in programming and web as a freelancer. And I've created over 10 scripts and over 5 iOS apps. I'm also a database administrator. Okay, let's go to slide 1. There are two types of error messages that you might encounter when you publish your script on your web server. First one is 500 internal server error. And this is a general HTTP status code that means something has gone wrong on the website server, but the server could not be more specific on what the exact problem was. The second one is status code 502. And this is a process failure and this means the server has received an invalid response as you can see the description says the 502 process failure error page is returned when the hosting or app misconfiguration causes the worker process to fail so these are the steps that you must take to get your exact error message the very first thing you should do is to enable your project to display the details of your error messages. Number two is your, you should update your launch settings to enable detailed error. The third one is update web.config web to enable std out lock enabled. And the other one is to create locks folder. The fifth one is restart your IIS server and finally you should check your log folder to see the actual error message. And keep in mind that you should manually create a folder called logs in the root of your app and you should ensure that your application pool's identity has right permissions to the logs folder. Some users have reported that they had to restart their server for the changes to take effect. So please restart your IIS server after you have updated your program.cs and web.config file. And I will show you soon how to do that. And something important, don't forget to disable std out logging when troubleshooting is complete. I mean you should set it to false. Now let's go into the actual project folder. Mine is called my project. I will browse into it and find uh, the folder named properties. Under properties, you will find a file called launch settings. Open that file. I'll use notepad plus plus because it's easy to use and edit. And uh, keep in mind under your production environment. Here it is, my project production. As you can see, I have enabled, added this line, ASP.NET Core underline detailed errors, and I have set it to true, set it to one. It means it is set to true. Then close this file and go to the your root folder, find program.cs. Okay, now I should go to my deployment folder. As you can see, I'm now in my current project folder. Now I go back to the deployed folder. As you can see, there is an additional file called web.config here when you deploy your application. I'll edit it. Okay, as you can see on this line, ASP.NET Core Process Path.NET, you've got a property std out log enabled and it is now set to false 
it means it won't log any error messages you should set it to true okay I save the file and if you have upgraded your project to use Microsoft ASP.NET Core 2.2 and above 2 2.1 or 2.2 and still get 500 error message you should change this property here called modules it's now set to ASP.NET Core module v2 I will remove this v2 and now we are set I save the file okay now let's go back to the slides I want to explain something so most of the time the possible cause is that your dotnet core version which is installed on your server is lower than the version you are using on your local machine so you should upgrade your dotnet framework on your web server as you can see and uh, if you still get this 500 error message you should change that ASP.NET Core module v2 to ASP.NET Core module without the v2 here is an, a screenshot of the logs folder as you can see it begins with std out underline and a random number dot log after you've uploaded your files to the web server it will create the log for you and if you still have problems there are uh, some additional steps that you can take first thing you should update your dotnet sdk core to the latest version and the second one uh, which some users have reported is they have published their app and their scripts as a self-contained deployment and this will copy all the necessary files and this will show them the error message they are getting if their dotnet core environment is lower than uh, the one on your local machine and you can also enable failed request tracing in your control panel in your server to see some additional error messages now let me show you an example of the error messages i i get I'll open my logs folder as you can see there is a log created for me I open the file in notepad as you can see it says it was not possible to find any compatible framework version the specified framework microsoft.asp.net core.app version 2.2.0 was not found as you can see the the error message is quite self-explanatory and it shows that the version I'm using on my web server is not the latest version I should go on and update my version my SDK version on my web server okay thanks everyone for watching this video if you have found this video useful please go on and like this video thanks again thanks for watching bye